Welcome to Understanding Ease Curves. Today I'm going to show you how to use the GSAP Ease Visualizer to choose, configure, and even design the perfect ease. To get to the GSAP Ease Visualizer, from any page on the site, click on Docs, and then in the left navigation here you're going to see Easing. We'll click there, and this will bring up the Ease Visualizer over here on our right. The ease curve that we see right here shows us the relationship between the progress of the tween and the value that is being animated. You'll notice that when I press the preview button, this ball on the right shoots up. That ball is the target of this tween, and you'll see that its Y position is animating to negative 500. That's why on the left here we see value negative 500. I'm going to change the duration of this tween so that it's easier to see what's happening. Let's make it five seconds long. We see these crosshairs that show where the progress and the value are intersecting on this curve. Now the most important thing to understand about ease curves is that they dictate the rate of change of an animation. If we switch over to no easing at all, you'll see that our ease curve is a straight line here meaning that there's a one-to-one -one relationship between the amount of progress that changes and the amount of change in the value. Now to make things a little bit easier to understand, I'm going to superimpose some values along the y-axis here so that you can see that we are starting at a y of 0, and then we have markers for negative 100, 200, 300, 400, and 500. Now when the progress of the tween gets to halfway, or 0 0.5, you'll see that we cross this curve here at a value of negative 250, which shows us that when the tween is halfway through its progress, it is halfway to the end value. When we get to a progress of 1, you'll see that the value is the end value of negative 500. So refer to this as a linear rate of change. Now if we jump over to something like a power 4 ease, you're going to see we have a very steep curve here and then it flattens out at the end. And if you pay attention to the beginning of the animation, you'll see that the ball is moving very quick at the start and then slows down at the end, almost to a point where you can't even see it moving. And if we compare this ease to the previous one, if I go to a progress value of 0.5 here, and go up to where we're going to intersect the curve, you're gonna see that halfway through the tween, we're already at a value that's very close to the end value. Let's just say it's something like negative 495 right here. So that means that in half the progress of the tween, we've gone almost the full way to the end, which means that we have a very quick rate of change. And so when we're reading ease curves, what you really need to remember is that where the curve is steep, that is where we have a very quick rate of change. And towards the end here, you'll see that for the second half of the tween, there's virtually no change in the steepness of the curve. It like flattens out. So we're going from this value of, we'll say, negative 495 to negative 500 for the rest of the duration of the tween. And again, if we watch the ball, you'll see at the end it moves so slow that there's hardly any change at all because it virtually flattens out. Maybe I'll switch over to a power two out ease and you'll see now that at the end it still slows down where the curve flattens out. At the beginning where it's steeper, that's where it's quicker. Again, steep curves mean a quick rate of change. And for the eases I've shown you so far, they all get slower and the curves get flatter at the end because we're using ease out. And that means we're going to slow down at the end. If I switch this over to an ease in, that's going to make the curve flat at the beginning, which means a slow rate of change, and then they're going to speed up at the end. We'll jump over to a power three, which is going to be a stronger curve. And again, it's moving hardly at all at the beginning, but at the end, you'll see that it speeds up. So again, where the curve is flat, we have a low rate of change, which means a slower animation. 
where the curve is steep here, that's a quicker rate of change, and that's where things are going to be speeding up. Now, with this five second duration long tween, you know, that's really a lot of time in animation, all right? And so if we bring this back down to something like one second, you know, you'll see here that it's drastically different. But again, it's still slow at the beginning and very fast at the end. So you've seen in and out, and now let's switch over to an in out. And as you may imagine, we're going to go slow in the beginning with the rate of change, quick in the middle, and then slow again with the rate of change at the end. So we're literally speeding up here, going very fast, and then slowing down. We'll watch that one more time, and that's all gonna happen within one second. So hopefully now you're understanding how eases control the rate of change of an animation. But next, I wanna show you how eases control the direction of an animation. For all the eases I've shown you, we've gone from the starting value and increased to the ending value. But if we switch over to something like a bounce ease, you'll see we bounce off of that end value. We very quickly shoot up to the end value of that negative 500, and then the value goes back to somewhere around negative 350, back up to negative 500, back towards the starting value again just a little bit, and does it again. So hopefully it's clear that this ease curve controls the speed and the direction that the target element is animating. Starts fast and then slows down with those little hops. Next, I'll choose the back ease, which overshoots the target value and then comes back down. Since there's an overshoot, I want to point out that the end value is now negative 250. And what I'm going to do is change this parameter here to increase the strength of the overshoot. And what you'll see is that it pops up way above that end target value. I'm going to guess somewhere around negative 350 here. So the ball is going to shoot up and then come back down. If we switch this over to an in for the direction, you'll see that we go beneath the starting value and then shoot up quickly towards the end target value over here. Another ease that changes direction also is elastic, where we're going to do a little bit of a wiggle, okay? This is set to in, so the elastic part happens at the beginning where we go just above and below the starting value a bit before we fly up to the end value. Typically, an elastic ease would probably have the direction set to out. And so here you get a little nice elastic effect at the end. Looks really cool. And this ease is also configurable, but I'm going to not go into all the details right now. I suggest you play around with them yourself. So take some time, explore the different eases that are available, switch the direction from out to in out, and always keep in mind again that where the curve is steep, you're going to have a quick rate of change, and where the curve is flat, there will be a slow rate of change. And while you're over here, explore a bit more. You can change the graph view to a clock view, where you're going to see the selected ease compared to a none ease or linear ease with the green hand of the clock being the selected ease and the gray one having no ease. What's also nice is this box view, which shows you your selected ease compared to the standard power eases. I would strongly suggest that you bookmark the ease visualizer because choosing the right ease and the right duration for your animations is really so important. Now, I can't go into these eases in detail here, but check out the extra eases like rough. You'll see here you get this totally erratic and random animation here, and it's totally configurable too. We can turn off the randomness so they get this evenly distributed shaking. You can change the number of points and so much more. In this example, I'm using it to make this text flicker and shake and rotate all at the same time. In this shiver animation, I'm tapering in the amount of shaking so that it starts with just a little shaking and then it gets more intense and then goes back down to being slower again. It's this amount of fine-tuned control that only GSAP is gonna provide for you. The slow ease here is very unique in that it combines three eases into one. We have an ease out, 
that goes into a linear ease with the constant rate of change, and then it accelerates on the way out. There's a lot of cool effects you can make with this, and one of the more interesting features is that you can configure it so that this ease actually ends where it begins. You'll see here with the yo-yo mode set to true that we shoot up to the target value, stay there, and then go back down to where it began. Trust me, there's some cool things you can do with this. This text effect here is driven by the slow ease. You'll notice that each word comes in kind of quick, then it grows at a linear rate, and then goes out fast. It's one of the best and most common uses of the slow ease. And for a more advanced application of the slow ease, we have this whirl around text effect that I just love. It's created by applying separate slow eases for the X and scale values of each of these words. It's one of my favorite effects to teach my Creative Coding Club students. And lastly, we have custom ease, which allows us to configure the ease curve however we want. By holding down Alt or Option, I can click to add points and I can adjust the curve exactly to my liking. Here you'll see the ball is gonna go up, down, and then shoot up again. In this demo here, I use a custom ease to make the car slow down when it gets to the top of each of these little hills. You'll notice that it also speeds up on the way down and it looks really natural. And this motion study logo that I did never could have happened without custom ease. Keep your eye on this little ball as it goes along the path. What you're going to see is that right around here, as it comes to the top of this hill, there's a little bit of anticipation, and then it's going to go swoop down really fast, and then as it shoots in the air, it's going to be slowing down, and then it's going to accelerate on the way back. So what we'll do is just watch that again in real time, and you're going to just see that it looks really realistic, all right? And again, that could not be possible at all without custom ease and a firm understanding of how ease curves work. So again, spend some time in the ease visualizer and get familiar with how these different curves work and how they relate to the animation that you see. You wanna keep in mind that when we ease out, we're going easy on the way out, so that's where we'll be slowing down. If we change the direction to ease in, it's gonna go easy or slow on the way in and then speed up. So I hope you've enjoyed this little tour. I don't wanna keep you much longer, but I do want you to know that I worked at Green Sock back when this was their logo, okay? I was there when they started transitioning from Flash to JavaScript and I was learning most of these tools before documentation even existed, all right? So I'm just creating lessons that I wish I had when I was learning this stuff, all right? I've taught thousands of developers how to master the basics of GSAP and use all their special tools, all right? I've been doing this for over 10 years, and uh, although the lessons might not always be the prettiest or the fanciest, I really want you to master the fundamentals so that when you see effects online, you can say, hey, you know what? I know what tools I need to build that, all right? So there's this old saying that says, if you wanna learn how to build a house, grab a hammer and follow a home builder around for six months. Well, through my Creative Coding Club courses, that's basically what I'm allowing you to do, okay? I want you to jump in, do the lessons, just a little bit each week, and you'll have an opportunity to see just how I would build these things, all right? I'll show you step by step. We'll look at the CSS, the HTML. I'll teach you some basic JavaScript tricks along the way. You don't have to be a front end expert for this stuff, all right? I'm gonna keep it simple, but you're gonna be amazed at the results if you put in the time. So I welcome you to check out these courses and discover the joy of animating with code. See you in the club.